Good evening. Welcome from Brady Street Stadium in Davenport in week two of the high school football season. I'm Roland Glenbine alongside Chris Anderson. You are tuning in to uh, the Discover Muscatine Sports Network's coverage of Muscatine football. And you might notice a little something different this week. And, uh, well, we want to bring you video. We always do. But uh, broadcast restrictions tonight set in place by Davenport Central High School is making this uh, a radio-only type broadcast, Chris. It is, and which, you know, they have a broadcast that you can watch and you can pay for, and, uh, I, you know, I don't know exactly where you go to see that. I would assume their website or something. Uh, but, of course, we're always going to make sure that we bring musky athletics to you one way or another, uh, especially since we are the exclusive provider. There uh, isn't radio coverage this year. So we want to make sure that no matter what, we're doing everything we can to bring it to you guys. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to be taking some pictures throughout the game and some clips. I won't show the clips during the game, but maybe afterwards as highlights. Uh, but we will be able to put up some still images. I'll do my best to kind of keep that going while keeping the broadcast rolling so everybody knows what's going on. So, yeah, we, we apologize. It's it's their, their hosting, and it's their rules, and we're playing by it. And, and we're glad they're letting us in the door, unlike yeah. another school down the road. But anyway, we'll, we'll grass, let's, I, yeah. let's talk some football instead. Let's talk some football. That sounds much better. Uh, yeah, Muskies, this is a, a big one tonight. After uh, kind of stubbing the toe, uh, some injuries, definitely uh, hurt in week one. Not the result we expected to get. I think we also faced a better team than maybe we expected to get in Cedar Rapids Jefferson as well. Uh, another chance tonight to get that first win against the Davenport Central team. Another team that struggled mightily last year. Just 1-8 and eight last year. And uh, they gave up over 50 points per game last season as well. Their only win actually came against Cedar Rapids Jefferson. So uh, there you go with that. They won week one against Clinton. So, uh, you know, we'll see what to expect tonight. But, you know, what, what hampers things, again, is the Muskies are dealing with the injuries. We all know the first two plays from scrimmage last week, uh, pretty much nightmare scenario. It, it doesn't get any more brutal than that. Yeah, you, you lose, you know, Brokhart. Lincoln Brookhart to a broken ankle. And then the second play, uh, what looked amazing, a 70-yard touchdown run by Ty Kozad ended up, uh, with an injury, but the good news, I guess, is it doesn't look like it's going to be a season-ending injury. No. Uh, Ty got some good news from the doctor on Monday. Yeah, so uh, talking with Mr. Henson, you know, obviously injuries of this nature, they're variable. There's so much it depends on. And, you know, I think the good news is the MRI showed that it wasn't a tear. So we're looking at probably like a week-to-week -week thing. It, it could be several. You know, I don't think anybody's counting on him next week. Um, but knowing Ty, he'll want to be out on the field as soon as possible. And you know Nicole Calvert will be there making sure that he's doing what's right for him long term. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think Ty had been shooting for week four, probably week five. So a couple yeah. weeks of good rest will do him some good. I communicated with him this week, and he's all set to go week four. And, again, that really depends on how the rehab goes. And, and you know, as determined of a young man as he is, he's going to do everything he can to – to get that rehab and get back on the field, uh, hopefully week four, and that would be uh, back home against Dubuque Hempstead as uh, the Muskies uh, hit the road next week at Iowa City West. So uh, you know we'll we'll wait and see, but uh, we everyone kind of feared the worst there, and and even Ty did. You know I talked to him this week, and he he thought it was torn. So. That would have been pretty much season over, senior season, but uh, that's not the case. It's just a strain, and it's just going to be a uh, week by week, see how things progress there. And, and now the Muskies have to find a way to win without him, and this tonight, a winnable game. You know, I would sure think so, and I think a lot of it's going to do with how they bounce back. You know, if this is a team that says, you know what, we're going to do everything we can, you know, crap happens, whatever, we're going to go out and give it our all, and play like we know how to play, it, you've got a chance at this game. What helps is they've had, I mean, it's a short week, but they've had that short week to prepare knowing that they would not have Ty and it would not have Lincoln, and, and those other guys are now going into this game with the mindset that they're the ones that, that are going to have to bear this load on their shoulder. Uh, so, you know, offensively is what I think everyone kind of focuses on, and, and this is a team that didn't score – 
and talking about the Muskies, didn't score in the second half last week. Uh, but defensively, that's got to be uh, an area of improvement as well. Uh, that game against Jefferson, not the way that the coaching staff wanted to see the defense play, giving up five touchdowns, uh, over 400 total yards of offense. That can't happen if you want to win football games. No, uh, and that's that's the tough thing. I think when the offensive side, you know, because those first, what, five, six drives, both ways, it, it was like this offensive slugfest, right? And there wasn't a lot of defense. And then as our offense slowed down, the defensive side stayed pretty much the same. Yeah, there, there was, you know, you got the one turnover, the interception by uh, Garrido. That was great, but they only forced one punt against that Jefferson team. And, and who knows? You know, we, we know what Jefferson did last year. I, I, are they going to be as bad? I don't think so. I think we saw a very good Jefferson team, and, and they're actually playing tonight one of a handful of games in the state. So uh, they might just pick up a win tonight. We'll, we'll get a better idea of what we faced last week uh, to see how they did tonight uh, up in Cedar Rapids against Marshalltown. Now, the opponent tonight is uh, one that Muscatine is very familiar with. Played them every year, but not the last two. Have a two-year absence in this rivalry of uh, conference foes. If you go back, yeah, you go back to like say 2008. It's it's a pretty even series. In fact, the, the teams have kind of exchanged victories over the last uh, few meetings. Muscatine has won eight of the last 13. In this set, the the last time out was October of 9th of uh, 2020. Muscatine won that game 21 to 14. And in fact, the last five meetings, the teams have kind of rotated victories back and forth. So that's the history between these two teams as both teams kind of run out on the field at the same time right now. Central holding the big DC flag and the, the Central Blue Devils wearing the all blues tonight, blue pants. Blue jerseys with white numbers and white helmets. Your Muskies wearing the roadies this evening. Gold pants with purple striping down the side, on the side of their pants. So white jerseys, purple helmets as I get back into my radio mode days here and uh, paint the picture for you as the teams are on the field. And we're uh, a few minutes away from kickoff this evening. But uh, this is a big one. You know, we, we talk about the playoffs, and it's never too early because that's the goal. you got to win five games. You might sneak in with four, but now you got to win five. Is pretty much what the goal is. And when you looked at the preseason coming in, you looked at your schedule, I think you kind of chalked up last week for a win. So you didn't get that. Now you got to make up somewhere. This is another one that you pretty much chalk up as a win. So you can't really lose two of your expected wins and still make it. And you got to find a way to get this win tonight on the road against a team that, again, won last week up in Clinton. Clinton, uh, not really the strongest program these days. That was just an ugly ball game. In fact, not a lot of offense. Both teams fumbled three times in that ball game up in Clinton last week. And it was the Blue Devils getting the victory 21-13 to against the River Kings. So that was their week last week. And we'll, we'll see what happens here. There wasn't a whole lot of offense for Davenport Central to speak of last week. Now, this is a team that did throw the ball a bit, the Blue Devils, under second-year coach Alex Berg. They were 7 of 15 through the air last week, 138 yards. They only had 58 yards rushing on 26 attempts, so basically you know, just two yards per carry. It wasn't a very strong running game, which is what I think you more think of when you think about Central football. But they got a, a senior quarterback, and they're, they're not afraid to put the ball up in the air. Tatum... Uh, Roselle is his name, a, a senior, against 7 of 11, 138 yards passing last week for Roselle. So the teams are taking the field, and uh, the Muskies are going to start off on offense, and they'll be going uh, right to left in this first half of play. Just a beautiful night for football. It's going to get hot again this weekend, but compared tonight, uh, to last Friday, and it's just night and day. The temperature is uh, cooled off here as the sun sets, and there's a nice little breeze. It shouldn't really uh, affect the throwing game too much tonight. Not a whole lot of wind, just a nice breeze up here in the booth and pleasant temperatures, and hopefully that will cut down to uh, on the cramping. We saw a lot of cramping issues last week, but uh, the weather, you really can't ask for a more beautiful night, Chris. I mean, you could, but I don't know that you're going to get anything nicer. How's that? Always ask for I, more, right? You know, I, you know, 
I have a feeling I'm going to be in rare form tonight, so just a warning for everybody out there. It could there be rainy be money. Going. I guess that would be better. All right. So the central student section is letting baby powder fly through the air right now to the chagrin of those around them that are not students. And uh, we're ready for some football. Blue Devils kicker talking to the official right now. He puts the ball down on the tee. And uh, Jackson Jays will do the kicking duty. 0 of 3 in touchbacks last week, so this could be a chance to get a return. And I have a feeling we're going to see a return for touchdown. If not tonight, definitely this season. Muskie's on the cusp of breaking one. And here we go. The ball is in the air. It's fielded at the 10, up to the 20, up to the 30, and out to the 35-yard line. Not a bad return right there by Darnell Thompson, and that's where the Muskies will start this evening off on their first try of offense here. So out on the field comes Gage Curtis, the sophomore quarterback. Didn't get the chance to air it out a whole lot last week. Just four pass attempts, completed one of those for just three yards. We'll see if the game plan changes a little bit tonight against this central defense. Curtis breaks the huddle and uh, we're ready for our first play from scrimmage. The Muskies send one receiver off to the right and it's Thompson in the backfield on the left hip of Curtis. Here's the give to Thompson. Thompson retreats and gets caught in the backfield. A big loss on the first play all the way back to the 28-yard line. So the Muskies try to go wide on the first play, and actually they'll give them forward progress back to the 31. So a loss of four will bring up second and 14 for the Muskies. Last week, Muscatine really stayed between the tackles, didn't, do a whole lot adjusting in the second half. Jefferson did, and boy, you saw it in the second half. Jefferson's defense started kind of run blitzing right up the middle, and that really stymied this musky offense. We'll see what they plan on tonight, and uh, we have a full house backfield and a whistle before the snap as the official is pointing to the central corner. I'm not sure this is going to be a flag. This might be an equipment issue. So we'll get that straightened out. Reset the ball for play, and here we go, second and 14. Just underway here tonight from Brady Street Stadium. Roland Glenbine alongside Chris Anderson. Thanks for joining us on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network, bringing you the radio call tonight. And second play is a handoff to Thompson, and he picks up a couple of yards, but the Muskies are facing a long third down situation right now. On their first possession, the ball marked at about the 33-yard line. They got to get to the 45. Ball placed on the right hash mark, and we'll see if the Muskies go to the air for the first time tonight. The young sophomore signal caller sends his team to the line. He will take the snap under center. Wide out, off to the left. Back to passes, Curtis. Curtis lets it fly. The ball is caught at the 40. Got some work left and comes up about two yards shy of the first down. Nice catch there by Cooper Yao, extending the arms and bringing down the football. But uh, fourth and two upcoming, and we'll see uh, what Coach Hawkins has planned here. Already has the kicking, uh, the punting unit out on the field. And Jackson uh, Othmer will punt this one away. He stands at his 28-yard line. Good first week for Othmer. Highly rated kicker slash punter. Puts the ball away under heavy pressure. Gets it. It's a high punt. And the ball will fall to the ground and take a musky bounce inside the 30, inside the 25, and roll right around the 20-yard line. Good job by Othmer there under some pressure to get the ball away and got the nice hop. So now the defense will come out. And again, this is a defense licking its chops, maybe licking its wounds as well off of last week's performance. Got a lot to improve upon, and we'll see how they do tonight against the central offense. Also looking 
to uh, make some improvements over uh, so so week in week one, even though it was a victory up in Clinton. Tatum Roselle, senior quarterback, will start off in the shotgun. Ball on the left, hash marked at the 21. Three receivers to the left. One comes in motion to give to that on the jet sweep. And out to the 30 and even more to the 40 to midfield. He's got one man to beat down the sideline. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Central Savion Ross goes 79 yards on the first play from scrimmage. Not the way this Muskie defense wanted to come out the gates. I've been muted this whole time. Everybody's probably happy. Actually, I've been working on trying to get some pictures, folks, but that definitely was not the way you wanted to start off. Nope. So the extra point team on the field right now, and actually they're going to go for two, it looks at. Yeah. Like they're going to send three receivers to the right, two to the left. Quarterback keeps it, stretches for the end zone. I believe he got it. There's no signal now, a late signal. And the point, try is good, but there's a flag on the field, and I think that was an illegal formation is going to be the call. You know, that's the tough thing about those uh, trick plays at the beginning where, you know, they're running around in circles and doing all that fun stuff. You dang well better know what you're trying to do and yeah, it was a little going. Ring around the rosy there in the huddle, it, and they broke know, it. I, I do know a college team that's done that and done it successfully, but um, you don't see it a lot in the high school game. This is our first big blue reference tonight already? It, it, it is. Oh, it is. wow. It is. Didn't take it doesn't long. take long. Extra point. This time the kick is up, and it is good. And the Central Blue Devils. One play, 79-yard touchdown drive, and they take a 7-0 lead in this ball game. 9-11 to go in the first quarter. We'll be right back on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. As a seasoned 30-year MPW employee, I can tell you we do the right things the right way. Our Powering the Future plan is just the latest example. It allows us to transition away from coal-fired generation and increase sustainable energy sources while maintaining the reliability you've come to expect. It's a historic transition that positions our community for progress. I believe in it. Back here at Brady Street Stadium, Jackson Jays kicks it away to the 10-yard line. Here's Thompson on the return, gets a couple of blocks, breaks free from the 20, and uh, out of bounds across the 30. Another nice return by Thompson, and the Muskie offense now looks to respond, now trailing in this ballgame 7-0. So Curtis comes out, completed his first pass of the night, Picked up about 12 yards on that as well. It was unfortunately third and 14. We'll see if the passing game gets a little more traction here with Coach Hawkins as now Muscatine trails. They'll come out with the receiver set off to the right, ball on the right hash, and now they'll switch everybody on the line. And here's the snap. The give off the left tackle is Truesdale. Not a whole lot there. Dayton Truesdale actually loses a couple of yards as this Davenport Central defense was waiting for that one. Second down and 12 now. Jackson Othmer comes into the ball game now on offense as a, a wide out. He splits off to the left. Curtis gives to the first man through. He's got a hole. Truesdale back to the 40-yard line. Nice pickup. 
It leaves it about a third down in well, two and a half, maybe three yards upcoming. Much, much more manageable for this Muskie offense. Othmer leaves, and Vaughn Brookhart comes in now with the play. Eight minutes to go in this first quarter. Brookhart splits off to the left. Curtis under center. Here comes the run blitz. The give is to Truesdale. He fights for the first down, and looks like he just got enough. They will move the chains for the first time for the Muskies tonight. First down and 10. Well, Dayton Truesdale, a nice week last week, a nice first half especially. Had that long 54-yard touchdown run. He came in in relief and did a nice job. Going to have to carry the load here most likely tonight and uh, next week at least. First down and 10. Receiver split off to the right. The give is to the left. And Aiden Lopez crosses midfield, goes out of bounds. At about the 49, about two yards shy, eight-yard carry for Lopez. That went out of bounds right in front of Ty Kozad, who's celebrating. And you, you, oh, not too yet, not too much, young man. You don't want to aggravate anything. That was all I could think of uh, on the touchdown run. Uh, was that late second half after he'd heard it? He went running down to celebrate. Yeah, the second quarter. Yeah, he was running. He was limping, running. Here's the kid to Truesdale again, and another first down. So this offense now moving the ball against this central defense. Back-to-back -back first downs as Truesdale starts to get some traction against this Blue Devil offensive line, or defensive line, excuse me. Blue Devils have some big boys up front there, including Nicholas Mosley, number 71, five foot eight, 319 pounds. That's your nose tackle tonight. Split left is Othmer. Curtis under center. Takes his time, now gives off to Ryland. Seth Ryland's first carry of the night is a good one. Across the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Pick up a five for Ryland. Again, Vaughn Brookhart comes in. Uh, Brookhart and Othmer tonight are switching up and calling in plays this evening. Now it's Brookhart's turn, and he'll split off to the left. Rylan, you're back. Under center is Curtis. Curtis snaps it, gives off to Rylan. Rylan makes the first man miss. There's a flag on the play as Rylan does get the first down. Now we'll see what the call is. Flag thrown on the far sidelines. Right about the line of scrimmage. A legal formation called. Too many men in the backfield for a Muscatine. We could actually hear the official up here in the booth tonight. I appreciate that, an official that, that shouts out his calls. Unfortunately, that first uh, flag does wipe out a first down, and the Muskies all the way back to really the original line of scrimmage, second and 10 now from the 43-yard line. Othmer comes off to the near side. Wing on to the right, back to throw. Curtis, Curtis now scrambles. He's going to run it, and he gets hit late. I don't see a flag, however. Well, he went into his slide and got hit after uh, words. In college, you're going to get a flag on that. Tonight, on that first play anyway, nothing thrown, and it will be a third down and eight upcoming for the Muskies, just a two-yard scramble for Curtis. This might be a two-down situation right here for the Muskies. The ball sits at the 41-yard line. Trailing 7 nothing midway through this first half, first quarter, excuse me. Curtis back to throw, rolls to the left, looks, looks. Going to let it go. He has a man wide open, and he dropped the ball. Oh, wow. Curtis hit the hands of his intended receiver. 
And Sawyer Zach, the tight end, just couldn't handle it. Bobbled it a bit. The ball falls to the ground. That would have been a first down. Now it's a fourth and eight, and out comes Othmer in the punting unit. Well, an opportunity right there for the Muskies early. Falls harmlessly to the turf. Othmer back to about his own 44-yard line to punt this one away. Good snap. Here comes, and there's a fake. Othmer tries to fake it. He's got to beat one man. He's got it down to the 30, down to the 20-yard line, and he gets hit out of bounds. That flag upcoming, and now Othmer throws the ball at the central player, and we'll see if there are more flags coming. Othmer fired up the fake punt. Nets the first down. A late hit on Central. The flag came right away after the late hit, and then Othmer tossed the ball right at the Central player who hit him late. And we'll have to decipher everything here as the officials huddle up. Right now, though, it is a first down Muskies. The ball down to the 18-yard line. Well, Coach Hawkins goes to the trickeration part of his playbook. Sensing his team needed something to get a little life. And that's something you absolutely love to see because you know that they're going to be focusing in on the run. We know we didn't pass a lot. Those trick plays are going to be saying, hey, look, we're going to come at you with a bunch of other stuff. Don't think you can just run us over. Officials still talking this over. We'll see if it's just one flag or two. So we got a personal foul late hit on Central. And that's going to be it. So good news for the Muskies. We'll tack on more yardage to that big run on the fake punt by Jackson Othmer. We're still talking a little bit now, the officials. The call has been made. Let's kind of figure out where they're going to spot the ball. And they'll be down around the 10-yard line. Probably down to the 9. The ball was at the 18. That's a half the distance. And it'll be just inside the 10 on the left hash. First down and goal. Muskies, 445 to go here in this first quarter of action. Curtis under center. Receiver off to the left. He gives off to Truesdale. Truesdale can't break through the hole. And picks up a yard maybe on the play, maybe two. Central player slow to get up right now on the musky sidelines. His teammates help him up, and we'll play on. Clock ticks down now, 427 left in quarter one. Second down and goal upcoming at the eight-yard line for the Muskies. Othmer brings in the play. Ball will be marked on the left hash, just inside the nine. Othmer split off to the left, wing set off to the right. Now they'll switch it up. Everyone moves around and a whistle and the play clock, I think, ran out. Well, they're going to they get the timeout called. They did. So the Muskies avoid the delay of game by calling a timeout. We'll just keep it here for this one, seeing the Muskies are knocking on the door here, trying to tie this game up. And we'll see. We'll see what they call. They went first down run. They have been a little more aggressive tonight and trying to get the ball in the air already. Two pass attempts, one completed, and one was dropped, but uh, was wide open on the play. So perhaps try to roll the young man out a little bit. You, you have that option. Curtis has shown the ability to, to run a little bit as well early in this ball game. So a little... RPO perhaps right here for the sophomore quarterback. We'll see. They'll, they'll talk it over right now. So we're just underway. The sun is uh, set. Dusk has fallen in Davenport. Glad you could join us on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Radio only broadcast tonight due to some broadcast restrictions put on us by the Davenport Central Administration. We uh, are on hand and calling this and going to take – a little highlight for you right now on this touchdown, and we'll post it right after the, the Muskie score, and you can see what happened. How about that positive thinking? I love it. All right, out of the huddle they come. Brookhart split off to the left. They'll switch up the line again. 
Here's the snap. The give right up the middle and not a whole lot there. Maybe a couple of yards down to the uh, six-yard line, seven or six. And a huge third down and goal upcoming for this Muskie team. And how aggressive do you want to be if you don't make it right now? You got the field goal in the bag. You figure with Othmer, it's early in the ball game. But already a fake punt. Can you fake again? You can, can do anything you want. That's legal anyway, and fakes are legal. So here we go, third down and goal from the seven. Receiver split off to the left. Ball marked in the middle of the field. Back to throw, Curtis. He lets it go. He's got a man inside the five, stretching for the pylon, and going to come up about a yard shy on that play. A little flare out by Curtis to Yao. Yao was wrapped up at about the four. He fought down to about the two and reached for the one. They mark the ball right at the two. Fourth down and goal, and the offense remains on the field. The Muskies want to punch it in. And even if you don't make it, you got Central on their doorstep right now. So a good time to be aggressive. Curtis under center. Fourth down and goal. The snap, the give to Truesdale. Right up the middle, he reaches for the end zone. No signal yet. There it is, touchdown, Muskies! Dayton Truesdale, right between the center and guard, the right guard, and just got enough to get it into the end zone. And the Muskies an extra point away from tying this game up at the 228 mark of the first quarter. Whistle, and they'll reset the play clock. Muskie's out in a traditional PAT formation right now. Othmer wearing the orange shoes, about to tie this ball game up. We're still kind of waiting as we uh, dealt with an equipment issue on the big central nose tackle. Now we're set to go. Othmer back and waiting. Snap is down. The kick is up. The kick is through the uprights, and the Muskies have this tied up at seven apiece. 2.28 to go in quarter one. We'll be right back on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. I hate to correct you, Roland. Yeah. We're going to watch that. Well, then we're going to go to Let's do that. We'll take a look at the play right here. Truesdale found enough in the mass of humanity to get it into the end zone and tie this ball game up at seven apiece. And, and you love to see it. It was a, an aggressive call on the fake punt, and you love to see that pay off, and it, it sure did for the touchdown. And we will be right back. MPW's plan, and I'm enthusiastic to be a part of it. I am Doug White, and I am MPW. In the future, more and more of the energy we use will come from renewables. However, the transition to being carbon free is a long journey, taking years of research and trillions of dollars nationwide. Our Power in the Future plan is a balanced approach. It increases sustainability while maintaining reliability and affordable rates for Muscatine. And it allows the flexibility to adopt new innovations as they become viable. The future is coming and we're embracing change to do what's best for our community. Learn more at mpw.org. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Pearl City Media. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom... At Roland Gladbach, Chris Anderson back here at Brady Street Stadium. 2.28 to go first quarter. Muskies have just tied up the score seven apiece. Othmer will kick things away. And Othmer wearing those bright orange shoes tonight. Kicker with a little flare. Here we go. Ball is snapped. The band is in their drum roll, and Othmer puts a foot to ball, and it's sailing towards the end zone. It will be fielded at the 1, and a return is on to the 15. One tackle broke to the 20. Out to the 30. Still on his feet. 
Breaks another tackle, and now a uh, host of Muskies bring down the return man out to the 37-yard line. Nice return right there by the Central Blue Devils. Jake Frona took it from the 1 to the 37, and that's where the Blue Devils will begin on this next drive. Well, again, this is a Blue Devil team that has struggled offense last week, fumbled it three times, really struggled to hang on to the ball against Clinton. Blue Devils did pick up the victory in that ball game. But they, they have shown themselves to be turnover prone, and this would be a great situation right here. The Muskies could get this ball back. Defense needs something to go well for them. Here's the snap. There's a fumble and a falling on it is Tatum Roselle, and I thought I called another one there. So, again, the Central Blue Devils do put the ball on the turf, but we're, they're able to fall on it, but still a loss on the play all the way back to the 30-yard line. Second and 17 now. And some movement up front. Hard count by Roselle. Got the Muskies to jump. And they'll get five free yards back. Well, those are the ones that just kill you as a coaching staff right there. The unforced errors. Hard count. Baiting the defensive line to come across. Second and 12. Clock is running. 140 left first quarter. Two receivers set each way. Roselle out of the shotgun. Roselle takes it, looks to throw, puts it up in the air, has his receiver out to the 45-yard line, about two yards shy of a first down. Catch made out there by Charles Eberling. Blue Devils back to the line of scrimmage. Roselle remains out of the shotgun. He'll send two receivers to the right, one to the left. Ball on the left hash. The give is to the back. He can't get by the defensive line this time. Great job by a host of musky defenders. Gang tackling. Joe Ortega. And the Muskies' defense looks to have held as out comes the punting unit now on a fourth down and three. Ball at the 44-yard line of Central. And looks like they will punt it away. Now, you got to be careful already. You did a fake on them, so don't let them do one on you. Snap over the head. Punter goes back to get the ball. He's in trouble. The ball's blocked. The ball is loose. The ball is picked up. And... Into the end zone, touchdown, Muskies. Cooper Yao picks up the loose change and deposits it into the bank. A bad snap went over the punter's head. He retreated, the, got the ball, tried to kick it away with... A couple of muskies in his face. The ball blocked, and Cooper Yao was Johnny on the spot. Touchdown, muskies. And, boy, this game is turned on a dime, Chris. Good job, this may be what it takes to fire them up. It has and me fired up. I, You're all calm over here. Well, I'm still trying to smooth <laughs> in some pictures for you folks without. You're fine. I have, more, I have enough excitement here for our entire crew. That was pretty right there. Here's the, the kick up, and the kick is good by Jackson Othmer. And with nine seconds left in this first quarter, the Muskies have scored 14 straight points to grab the lead, 14 to 7. We do have some video upcoming of nope. that play, and Didn't we don't. That ugh. I was okay. not expecting a scoring play there, folks. That's I all right. That's all right. We'll take a quick break and be right back. I saw you had the camera out.
Not many women operate these massive bulldozers, but MPW provides opportunities for anyone willing to work hard. I'm proud to have worked my way up to the material handling team, and I'm honored to be an example for the next generation of women working successfully as heavy equipment operators. But what's most important is doing what's best for the community. Every day, my coworkers and I are working to keep Muscatine powered. I'm Vicki Carter, and I am MPW. In the future, more and more of the energy we use will come from renewables. However, the transition to being carbon free is a long journey, taking years of research and trillions. Back here at Brady Street Stadium, Roland Glenbine, Chris Sanderson, the Muskies have just grabbed the lead thanks to some special teams. Bad snap on the punt, Let's, led to the block. And Cooper Yell, a little scoop and score. Just nine seconds left, first quarter, and here's the kick by Othmer, and that one's gonna sail into the end zone. Almost out of the end zone. Big foot right there. And we'll have time for one, maybe two more plays in this first quarter. Well, the momentum has definitely shifted and all the energy right now on the Muskie sideline. This is a chance for the defense to, to at least you know, force them a, a three and out, hopefully, and get this ball back. Don't let this central team get any more life. They're down now, uh, knock them out. Roselle out of the gun, two receivers both ways. Man comes in motion, snap, quarterback keeps it. Up the middle, Yao's there for the tackle, a couple of yard gain, and that will bring us to the end of the first quarter, an exciting first quarter this evening. And it has your Muskies in the lead, 14 to seven. We'll be right back on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. MPW is making green power possible. We're harnessing wind and solar energy to power your home or business. You can decide how much of your energy comes from renewables. 25, 50, 100 percent. Calculate yours online now. For just a few dollars a month, match all or a portion of your usage from the energy produced from our South Fork wind farm and our new project, Muscatine Solar One. Go green with MPW. Learn more at MPW.org. In the future, more and more of the energy we use will come from renewables. However, the transition to being carbon free is a long journey, taking years of research and trillions of dollars nationwide. Our Powering the Future plan is a balanced approach. It increases sustainability while maintaining reliability and affordable rates for Muscatine. And it allows the flexibility to adopt new innovations as they become viable. The future is coming and we're embracing change to do what's best for our community. Learn more at mpw.org. The home phone is making a comeback. Really? Why would I need a home phone? For starters, no drop calls. Back here at Brady Street Stadium, about to start quarter number two. Davenport Central now going right to left in the second quarter. Ball marked at the 23-yard line. Roselle out of the gun. Two receivers set each way. Back to his left hip. Roselle throws it out into the flat. Flag on the play. Catch is made, first down is fought for and attained out of bounds all the way out to about the 37. But again, a flag was thrown back at the line of scrimmage. We'll sort that out. And we have a little legal procedure called on the Blue Devils to wipe out the first down catch and push the Blue Devils back five more yards inside the 20 yard line. So second down in 12 upcoming. Passing situation for a passing team. Roselle out of the gun. Two receivers to his left, one to his right. Roselle rolls to his right, looking to throw. The ball is in. 